Our next guests are at South By to premiere a new MSNBC six episode series called Leguizamo Does America, a groundbreaking new show that's part politics, part road trip, and part history lesson that celebrates the history, culture, food, and politics of Latinos in the United States. Please welcome actor and comedian John Leguizamo, director Ben De Jesus, and showrunner Carolina Woo! Saavedra to the South by Southwest studio. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you for tolerating. <laughs> All right, yes. Thank you for tolerating my, my poquito Spanish. Uh, I'm trying. I tried with the accents. I hope I got it. I just very, started. very, very money pack. Very loud español, some fun up there. Yeah, thank you so much. It was really good. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. Uh, how does John Leguizamo do America in a way that America has not been done before? This is a great question because America has not been done the way it needs to be done, the way it did me, it mm. needs to be undone mm. till now. Because this is the first show of its kind, which is crazy. Which We're is the crazy. oldest ethnic group in America, the largest ethnic group in America, and there's never been an English language show about our culture. How can that be? I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, it's mind-blowing. And, and here we are, and the, you know, the, the three of us and MSNBC gave us this platform to make it happen. It's, uh, it's a six-episode arc. Yeah. Uh, you travel throughout America, and uh, you talk about this small small group called the Latinos. Uh, I think yeah, I've yeah, heard yeah. of them. You the, might have heard about yeah, them. Yeah, I might have heard of them. They're, they're, they're around in Texas. I see maybe, one or two. Maybe New York. One or two. A LA. Yeah, yeah. A couple. A couple. Chicago, yeah. Denver. I, I think these are the only three Latinos in <laughs> Texas <laughs> right now. <laughs> but we, Carol, feel, we, we feel very invisible. Yes. Carolyn, we were talking uh, right, right before, and you were saying, you've had an amazing career. You're crushing it. And you're saying, even on the last big show that you did, you are still in Hollywood. The only Latin, the only Latino in the entire- No, 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 first of all, I'm not the only Latina in Hollywood. <laughs> no, 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 but, but I'm saying I, the last project- No, but she claimed but, that. The, <laughs> la the no, last project I still. I would never yeah. pretend to claim that, but it is often the case that when you enter into these production companies yeah. uh, that hire you, you walk around the hallways and, and on your project and then other projects with their producers, et cetera, and you're often the one person in there that is a Latino. Absolutely, that still happens. Unless we're working on a production like this where the people up top are actively working to get people uh, who are Latino and you know people of color in general uh, into the into the behind the scenes as well as you know obviously in yeah. front of the scene. I mean, the crew was basically all Latinx, and it's all comes because Cesar Conde, the the, the chairman of NBC, made it a mandate to have 50% diversity. And he's going for it, and it's mm -hmm. incredible. And it wouldn't have happened without somebody who's an executive, a decision maker, a gatekeeper, exactly. opening gatekeeper. the gates who looks like us. And I think that's important because oftentimes <laughs> people see what's in front of the camera, right? So they're like, ah, oh, we need more actors like John and others. But it's the gatekeepers, the directors, yes. the agents, the producers. Yeah. Oftentimes, it's it's. A, I will say, it's, well, it's, oh, it's, it's it's just the executives. Let's not. <laughs> I, I don't care about agents, all that, managers. I want the decision makers who are green lighting projects because there's a lot of beautiful uh, 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 rhythm going on and feeling about less inclusivity, inclusivity, but nothing is being green lit. Mm. It's not. It's beautiful for optics. They're talking about it, but where, what, what is being green, green lit? That's what I want to know. And what's getting funded, right? And I think that's important because this team, Latinx, uh, Latino team, I want to talk about that for a second because apparently... Well, here, how, let's go in here for a second. Latino or Latinx, do you care? Does it matter? People care. I mean, jet, uh, older people hate it. Uh, mil uh, millennials hate it. I yeah. love it. I don't I know how it. you feel about I it. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm good with it. I, I, I like it. I think everybody's free to kind of choose their own, but I like that it's inclusive and it's not, it's not gender specific, like Latino or Latina. Right. But I'm not opposed to somebody using Latino or Latina either. So. Or even Latina, right? Just with include us. I don't care what you call me. <laughs> Just have Chicano, yeah, yeah. Latino, it doesn't yeah. matter. This, it was interesting because even in this document uh, we were writing and someone wrote Latinx, and I'm like, I think it's Latino. And then they, they went and revised it Latino, and the other person's like, no, it's Latinx. And I think it's interesting because Latinos I've heard, or Latinx, are diverse. Mm. They're all the same. And Ben, I think with this show, what's so important, even if you look at Texas, the, the Latino communities in Texas, you just go to, from town to town, it's like, no, we're Republican. Eh, yeah. we're Republican light. <laughs> eh, we're, we're progressive as hell. Eh, we don't even do politics. What does this show explore about this diversity of Latinos that even Democrats have all of a sudden discovered, ah, it's not just one monolithic group. 
Exactly. It's important to realize that we come in a lot of different shades, colors, flavors, but we're all Latino. But we do have our own individual cultures that we celebrate, but we're also very inclusive. We love sharing our cultures, not with just other Latino people, but with other communities, uh, whether it's white or other people of color. It's like we're all about the more the merrier. Well, but, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, but to your point about, like, what do we explore in the show, yeah. we absolutely hit that, especially in the Miami episode, yeah. where we talk about, you know, there's obviously a lot of history in that, in that city, and we talk about how, based on the history of where we come from, and uh, that kind of dictates the politics that we follow once we mm -hmm. get here. You know what I mean? So, and our history is very varied. It's not a one, you know, not, not the, the same thing not didn't all happen. Mexico. It's all. No. It's not all Mexico. It's not all Puerto Rico. It's no. not all Cuba. It's. It's. There's various, you know, countries in South America and Central America, and each one of them has a history. And then we come up here to this country with that, you know, and that's what we carry forth in our politics. So yeah. it is very diverse. I mean, like white people are very diverse. Right. You got southern white people, no, you no, got no, northern no, white just people. All you the got, same. Yeah, yeah. They're all one represented by one T V yeah. show. Just yes. like we are. Yeah. I, I went to a, I went to a, I covered a Trump rally twenty sixteen uh, in May. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was the darkest thing uh, in the in the rally. I had to cover it. And it was like the entire all of whiteness, the diversity of whiteness was there. Old whites, right. young whites, blonde oh, whites, yeah. brunette whites. whites, yeah. It was tan whites. Tan whites, all of them. I saw them all. Uh, but the diversity of Latinos, you know, you have this rich culture cultures, I should right. say, uh, <clears throat> hundreds of years of history, right? Borders that bleed over. Mm -hmm. We're in Texas right now. And you've got six episodes, which really, if you think about it, it's not enough. No. And so the decision, you're like, all right, I got six episodes. I got to do America. I got to do Latinos well. How'd you decide on the six topics? Well, that, that, that's, that's a big question because what we are celebrating more than anything else is Latin exceptionalism. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we're after. And we wanted to be as inclusive and get everybody in. You know, we want to get our Colombians, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Cubans, Chileans, Mexicans, Peruvians, Mexicans. Now you can't uh, go on a roll. You can't forget. <laughs> Nicaraguans. <laughs> no, no. I, I could throw in Central America. Yes, I'm I'm Argentina. 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 <laughs> and the Caribbean, and we're all covered. Yeah. So we wanted, that's what we're celebrating. And mm. celebrating also the difficulty of being Latin in America mm. and how we struggle in, in this country because we're marginalized, money's kept from us, our wealth is stolen time and time again. You know, we're the only people in, in the history of America who two million Latin people who are American citizens were deported in 1930 by Herbert Hoover. Mm. Then again in the 1950s with the Wetback Act. Operation which is, Wetback. Yeah, which was okay to call it something like that. And they deported tons of uh, uh, American citizens who happened to be Latino. So our, that's what we were, wanted to represent in this show how being Latin is a superpower because no one survived the horrors that we have survived and still thrive. And it's, it's recent. You're talking about Operation Quote Unquote Wetback. That's what they called it, right? Yeah. Where they got rid of the Mexican workers yeah. when we became yeah. part of this economy yeah. uh, because there were too many of us that right. was coming, right? right. And, so, and you know, that coincided with the Immigration Nationality Act of 1965. So we'll finally let the Asians in, yeah, yeah. but one's got to go. Somebody's got to go. Someone's got to go. Have two America's many, not big yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and you, you, the things, the, the, what's past is present, and the reboots, right, where the boogeyman of the past or the boogeyman of the present, all of us here, I'm the son of Pakistani yeah. immigrants, we were called invaders right, right. Yeah. in 2018, right. yeah. uh, coming in a caravan. Uh, and I don't think people actually have really understood that type of language, how it impacts yeah our kids, mm -hmm. and right. you, we're, we're fathers. Yeah. Uh, when you hear that language being spoken by the president yeah. of the United States, and you're like, man, we went through this yeah. so that our kids won't have to. Right. Our kids have to hear this. The impact that has in this young generation, yeah. to hear that language, that yeah. even though you're born and raised here, you don't belong. I mean, uh, yes, I think we've all heard it at some point, and it doesn't matter what generation you're part of, you're going to hear it, unfortunately. And I think what's, I think what's really lacking, I, you know, we're having, this, we're having this issue in this country right now with critical race theory, right? right? And just basically, which is teaching history. That's all that is. And a lot of people in this country don't understand why we're even here. We're invaders, but they don't realize that our countries were invaded. And there's a lot of displacement that happens because of that. And oftentimes, the US has been responsible for that. So the, if people really understood their history here and really learned proper history, like really took a book like Open Veins of Latin America and read it in their history class, as opposed to your, you know, about Columbus every single year, you might know why the, the world looks the way that it does right. and well, why, why people, people are here. Come to 
right. America. Exactly. I, and first That's of all, America saying. was <laughs> discovered by us. We were the first people here. Sir, it yeah. was Columbus. Right. Right. I will not allow this. I will not allow this revisionist history. But you know, it's very important. You mentioned CRT, the attack on our histories, the attack on. But you know, you know, Latin history is is been banned in Arizona for over ten years, and most. Uh, cities in Texas don't allow you to teach Latin history but one day a year. So it, those attacks, those culture wars that have been started by, by Republicans, if I have to name somebody, uh, ha, has been already it. in effect yeah. before the, the Ron DeSantis, mm -hmm. the Ron Disgusting uh, started that. <laughs> and, and that's why I think the show is very important because it, it's a necessary pushback to those forces that are very active right now. And those forces, and I want to talk about Hollywood for a second. Now, we were talking right before. Uh, you go to Hollywood. For those who haven't gone, it ain't Rodeo Drive, right? Mm -hmm. You go to Hollywood, you're like, huh, most people here are Latinos or Latinx, and movies are being made half a mile away, and then you look at the movies, no Latinos. No. Yeah. None. No yeah. executives. You see one John Leguizamo pop up in a John Wick, you're like, yes, and they're like, hey man, how come you're not in John Wick 4? They're like, okay, at least he's trying to kill Santa, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the frustration of being in an industry, mm. which is in a city, which is 50% Latino, and not seeing right. yourself. It's cultural apartheid. And then I live in New York City where we're equal to the population of whites, 35 to 35%, and we're less than 1% of the stories in the New York Times, less than 1% of the staff, the journalists in the New York Times, the New York Post, the, the New Yorker, the New York Magazine. It, mm. How do you... It's happening everywhere. In Texas, is 40% Latino, and we're less than, what, uh, it's 2 or 3% of the politicians in office? I mean, that's cultural apartheid. That's what we live in. I mean, that's what's happening. That's how it feels to us. And that's why this show could have great impact. You know, with, with the work that they have done is so powerful and so important. This show could flip a lot of things, you know, and, and that's what the hope is. Yeah, and more than it being about like victimization or us feeling like, oh, this is coming from trauma, we're really celebrating joy. our culture. Yeah, it's yeah. joy, it's a celebration of our, our food, our artists, our chefs, our musicians, our, our actors, our activists, politicians, mm -hmm. as opposed to just saying, yes, this is what's happened to us and we're feeling misaligned or, or something like that. We're actually just trying to celebrate our culture and invite people in. And it's, it's a show of our strength as yeah. a community. It's a flex. Right? <laughs> it's a flex, yeah, 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 absolutely. That's it's like good. to your point earlier and to yours now, like, it is about like we've thrived. We continue to thrive despite all of this, right? And so that's that's what we celebrate in this yes. in the show. We add two point eight trillion dollars to the U.S. economy every year mm -hmm. in the United States. We're thirty percent of the box office. We over-index. We're only twenty percent of the population, but thirty percent. Four billion dollars we add to streaming. If we were our own independent country be the fifth largest economy in the world. And I'm not talking about all the land people in South America and Central America and the Caribbean. I'm talking about just Latinos in the USA. That's what we, but we're not getting our money's worth. And, and also, you know, the voices aren't being heard. And you mm -hmm. mentioned food, and, and I want to talk to you all about this. Because oh, first of all, always, be, the food get, got you, right? That's, that's, <laughs> that's, like, like, that's the host, that's the host, you have to. No, 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 because <laughs> well, we're at South By, food is important, but food <laughs> politics, right? Because. Mm -hmm. Anthony Bourdain, the late Anthony Bourdain, he said something that just stuck with me. You know, they asked him, who's the greatest chefs in America? He said, you know, the, the greatest chefs in America are the Mexican cooks. Mm. The ones in the French restaurants, the Pakistani <laughs> restaurants, the Latino restaurants. The sushi they restaurants. They literally <laughs> cook everything, right? And I remember, I, I just, it just stuck with me. I thought about it. I'm like, in the Bay, we're talking about, I'm from the yeah. Bay. Pakistani restaurant, Desi restaurants. And I remember 10 years ago, when they used to see like Mexican cooks behind, like some Desis would be like, Mexicans are making our food. Yeah. And now it's like, Mexicans are making our food. <laughs> yeah. That's a good chicken tikka masala. Yeah. Speaking about uh, an unspoken. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I think that was a thank you. No, that was a thank you. <laughs> but not just chicken, like anything, right? And speaking about the unsung heroes, the backbone of this industry, this multi billion dollar food industry that are cooking all of our food, yeah. that are feeding us, that come here and they're like, baguette? I'll make a baguette. Croissant? Can't even pronounce yeah. it? I'll make it for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. What is it about them that needs to be highlighted and, and, and really just celebrated? In, in a way that I think people, especially at South By, where food yeah. is huge and makes a lot of money, those, those, those folks ain't making money. No, they're not. And, and that's the problem. They need to be celebrated and given the proper salary, the proper opportunity to move up. That's what I saw when I was, I did Chef, this movie that was here great at South movie. By Southwest. Great movie. 
I wasn't trying to fish for a compliment. But it was good. It was actually a really good movie. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. You had to suffer by eating and cooking. Uh, oh, my God. Cubanos. I gained 30 pounds, and I'm so, I was hostile. No, um, what was I talking about? You made me forget. Food. Cubanos. <laughs> the people that need to be get. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I'm doing chef. I did a lot of research, and I worked in kitchens in, in New York City and everything. And obviously, everybody who's doing all the prep, all the work are Latinos, but they're not moving up. They're not given the opportunity to become the, the, the chef or the sous chef. They're doing all the prep and the hard work, but they're not allowed to move up. They weren't even allowed before, before the pandemic and Black Lives Matter. <clears throat> Latino people were not the maitre d's in New York City, L.A., Miami. Miami, yes, but everywhere else is always a white person. Trent. Yeah. No offense to Trent. He's a great maitre d', but uh, <laughs> well done. I tipped you well, Trent. But yeah, it's, it, it's, I think it's a great microcosm, right? Because it's the work that is done. The engine is hidden. But it's not just in food, right? Right. We, and it's, yes, especially in food. And during the pandemic, the, the, the people who were out there you know, making, I mean, pulling and literally uh, the essential workers, yeah, yeah. The essential workers were all, not all, but a large part of them, especially in the food industry, are Latinos. Mm. And they, these are people that work around the clock for little to no money. And they're, they're the backbone of our economy in so many different ways. And, and that, you know, across the board with different, you know, ethnic minorities, you know, that are like that nurses, you know, they're many of them from the Philippines and things like that. Again, it's not knowing our, the history of our country and how it really functions and works. And therefore, people are not giving proper credit. And absolutely, when it comes to the And that also industry, impacts that also impacts policies, because if people absolutely. knew those changes could happen. Right. right. Uh, uh, Maria Hinojosa, who's a friend of mine. Oh, I love her. Oh, she's Let's the give her a shout out. Let's yeah, yeah, I love her, love her, love, love her. I interviewed her. Uh, she's a friend. I Pioneer. Said, I said, what's the Pioneer? She was mm -hmm. the only Latina, she said, often mm -hmm. times yes. in the newsrooms. Yep. And she said, I had to lean in and had to be loud. This is tiny yep. Latina. Or it's the only way to make it. I said, what's the future of Latinos and Latinx in America? And, you know, she gave me multiple answers. But she says, I fear that the future is conservative and Republican. And you mentioned. Being for Latinos. So yeah, was she, she was just, it was a couple of months ago we were talking. Yeah. And. You know, you mentioned the attack on CRT, yeah. the attack on our histories, the attack on our stories. Right. And you're seeing this courtship of Latinos by the Republican Party. Yeah. Um, your, <laughs> I think your response to that, that you're seeing some Latinos be like, you know what, I'll go for a DeSantis. Right. But, but I mean, some Latinos are um, conservative because of Catholicism. And we, we value. We have, we have that, yes. But I think part of it was... Republicans were courting Latinos. De Democrats took us for granted. They felt they had us. They weren't knocking on our doors. They weren't talking about our issues. They didn't have Latinos as their consultants and, and, and experts talking to them and giving them advice. They weren't doing that. And if you don't reach out to us, well, how do you expect us to, to, to go to you? If the Republicans are courting us and putting money and talking about our issues, then we're going to go with them. I mean, it was just a, a Democratic mistake mm -hmm. and then on top of that trump signed those checks mm -hmm. with his name latinos bought that especially in texas when mira he really likes me i like i like him back you know <laughs> i'll get more and and that that stupid tactic worked i think i don't think we're leaning conservative but if you don't court us you're not going to get us and that's how republicans went over muslims in 2000 is same that when, yeah you weren't when no one invites you to the dance yep and someone gives you a little bit of love you're like, oh, yeah. <clears throat> thank you. Yeah. I'll show up. Uh, fi I mean, I wish I had more time with y'all. But uh, my, my. What would you ask us if you had more time? <laughs> oh, man. We talk about theater. We talk about New York. And we theater. Talk about oh, my God. Room. He's a playwright. We talk he's about our room. Because listen, I'll, I'll, well, I mean, I'll fanboy for a second. I'll try to be very <laughs> sincere here. Starting off as this brown kid in the Bay Area trying to write plays, I was like, how do I make it, man? And you had these plays. Yeah, yeah. And I read the scripts, and then you wrote a memoir. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, yo, if John can do it, <laughs> yes. DIY. Yeah. And then Robert De Niro comes and yeah. checks him out. And yeah. then he gets in the theater. And so I did my play at the New Eurekan, yeah. where what you've done. What a great spot. Great po Incredible I mean, spot. Pinero was there. He was one of the pioneers that made me feel. The late, great Miguel Alguin. Yes. That felt like, yeah, I mean, got in. That felt like I could do it. He, if he could write. Um, um, uh, uh, I'm blanking on the play, uh, uh, the, the prison one. Oh, shit. Uh, anyway, that great play that changed my life <laughs> that I can't right remember now. right now. Uh, that play proved to me, oh, my God, our language, what we do, our, our culture is viable as a theater piece. 
And to, get, to, to go from those humble beginnings to see you all at South by Southwest in, in the arc of one career, well done, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. And Thank on you. MSNBC now. You made it to MSNBC. Latinos have made it to MSNBC. Wow. <laughs> Mic drop. Uh, final, <laughs> final quick, quick question. I have 10 seconds. Should the next James Bond be Latino? Ooh. Well, James Bond was created by a Latino. It was an la appropriation of our culture. Ruby Rosa was the real James Bond. He was Dominican, playboy, double agent, race car driver. They stole that. That was the real James Bond. It should have been a Latino, and it better be a goddamn motherfucking Latino next time. <laughs> wow. John Leguizamo is ready to audition. Yeah. Yeah. But first... He must do America. Leguizamo Does America premieres April 16th on MSNBC. Please stay tuned because we've got a lot more coming your way, including the Indigo Girls, Damon Lindelof in the cast of Mrs. Davis, Cheech Marin, and a whole lot more. These interviews are also streaming live during the event on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash SXSW. I'm your host, Wajatali. Thanks for watching.